who do you think is going to have the bigger test? Who do you think is going to get more out of this? Or do you think they're both kind of equal in terms of what they can gain from this? Because I, I, Tyler Adams versus Mason Mount, that pumps me up. And obviously, uh, Brendan Aronson <laughs> running at Reese James pumps me up as well. Yeah, Tyler Adams, like I said, it's it, when, when he's in a comfortable s- situation, I, like the things he does really well are standout. But to be complete in his position, he's going to have to add some other pieces, which he's, this is why he's in this challenging situation, right? Can he, can he be a little bit better on the ball in terms of his buildup play? Can he break down lines with his passing, which we, we did see in, in the opening week, but to do that consistently, to add tools to his game. And then defensively, can he know when to step, when to drop, to not leave the, the, the team exposed in terms of the speed of the, of the Premier League? Like, take Mason Mount out of that conversation. And then Brendan Aronson, that's just a great matchup. Um, and again, playing against a back three or back five, so to speak, versus a back four is going to be ways in which we're probably going to have to face that or Brendan Aronson is going to have to face that and find ways to be effective, whether that's tucking inside, staying out wide and isolating, things like that. So I think it's equal in my mind. Um, who has more, to, who has more to, to, to prove at this point? I'd say probably Tyler Adams, to be honest with you. Brendan Aronson, I think, has shown what he does. He does at, 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 at the highest level. And that's going to always be team or tactical specific to be effective, right? Tyler right, Adams right, right. has, a, you know, he, he can play in a few different types of systems or, or has the potential to play in a few different types of systems to be effective. Yeah, I would say I agree with you about Tyler Adams. It's one thing to play against Wolves and, and to play against Southampton, but Chelsea is just a different kettle of fish. I don't know. I was trying to find the right phrase from that one. I don't even think that one's that cool, but I'm going to say it anyway. But I think there is something Definitely about Brendan Aronson. Cool. And, and to your point, if, how do they get Brendan Aronson the ball where he can be the most effective? I think that at times could be an issue for leads throughout the season where you know they're working so hard to do it. It looks like they want to they want to press and try to, to win the ball high up the field, of course. And then Brendan, Jack Harrison, those guys, Rodrigo can get the ball and, and do their thing. But but I still wonder <clears throat> now with ba- Patrick Bamford looking like he might be out as well, how that impacts their <clears throat> team and, and what other teams and how they defend. I'm just kind of t- this is another Leeds podcast here, but I want to say, uh, Charlie, who do you who do you want to see most in this game out out of Brendan Aronson? And I know we'll preview a little bit uh, in an upcoming podcast before the weekend starts, but I kind of want to get your thoughts now because I'm excited to talk about it. Just in hold on, of- Jimmy. How mu- how much do you have to like? What is your deal with Leeds? It's like twenty like percent. It's like twenty twenty percent. How often do we have to mention? You know, them you know they're inviting me to their game next week. I was just <laughs> oh, trying to be yeah. kind. Okay. I knew that going That's in. Fair. I'm just trying to be nice. Bring Jesse on the podcast. And I'll we'll bring talk. him on. I'll bring him yeah. on. Yes, exactly. Get Jesse on. Um, I think in this case, I want to see what Brent Aronson does against Chelsea. Out, out of the two players, who's, who stands to, I think, impress us the most in this situation, I think it's Brent Aronson. We, we know what we're going to get from Tyler Adams. We know okay. he's going to play the six. He's going to protect the back four. We're, we're well aware of kind of his capabilities. I think Brent Aronson just continues to surprise us all. Um, I don't think anyone necessarily thought he would hit the ground running as he has in the English Premier League with Leeds United. So now you've played a couple of of good teams, but not great teams by any means. Now you're playing against Chelsea. It's a different beast. So yeah, it's a different beast. If you can do it against a Chelsea and and keep up the same intensity and create this, the same amount of chances playing between the lines, the pressures um, that, that for me will say, you, you got to, he's got to be in the starting 11 direct for the U.S. men's national team. Come, come Qatar. Okay. Now, before we get into a little something, we're going to call three up, three down <clears throat> at the end of the show. So you guys like three guys that are maybe moving up the list for you and three that are maybe moving down. It doesn't have to be big movements one way or the other, but just want to get your thoughts on that. So you can start to collect those right now. And anybody that wants to hop in, let us know who you think has really started to move up the ladder in the comments on YouTube or hit us up at ISWT pod on Twitter to join the conversation if you're listening to this on your audio platform of choice. But before we get there, I want to talk about Sergino Dest. He was a healthy scratch for Barcelona this week and their season opening match versus Rayo Vallecano, which was a 0-0 result. He was deemed not worthy of a place in Xavi's 23-man squad for the game. Now, there's obviously been a lot of rumors of him moving and leaving Barcelona, even though I don't think Dest wants to leave, which sounds very similar to Frankie de Jong, one of his teammates. And there's less than two weeks left in the transfer window. Javi said this after the game. It was a technical decision. Of, of course, we have many possibilities to choose players. He knows my opinion about him. And this is, of course, a pity because many players cannot play. But this is football, no? That's what Javi said. That doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement, Keith yeah. Pierce. Uh, you know, you know, what, what, do you, what do you think happens, Mr. Or Charlie, go tactical, ahead. Uh, you know, you both know. When you hear tactical, is the reason that means you're just whack. 
<laughs> so, so I was like, that's the worst thing you can use against me is tactical. Don't tell me I, I'm, I'm not in the squad because of tactical reasons. You could tell me I've had a horrible week of training, I'm coming back from injury, or I'm not fit, whatever it is. Don't tell me tactical because I am I would say it's I a can play out. in any game. Like, don't don't tell me because the team's a little bit more aggressive or they or they sit back. That's the reason I'm not playing. Oh, my, we just got word in. Weston McKinney is starting today. Wow, is that is starting. like breaking news here on the Sox We Trust him. podcast. Throw him Weston in. McKinney uh, getting the start. Why not? If his shoulder's good enough you, to train, you, let's, let's let him play. Can I give you my three up then? Just, yeah, you want to go three up? You're going to go right into it. Well, we know Brandon Vest is down. We know Weston McKinney's <laughs> up. So what, Weston McKinney. Okay, uh, that's an easy up. one. So yeah. he's up. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Vasquez up. All right. Oh, yeah. there he is. Ringing it's endorsement. A, Charlie wait, wait, just yes. called him the starter in the World Cup. That's well, crazy. Wait, he, 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 first. He, he, it's only because I just told him that he's going to be a guest this week, potentially. Yeah, so exactly. He's going to change his and, uh, <laughs> and Brendan Aronson is enough. Brendan Aronson? Yeah. Interesting. Is yeah. that because Pulisic is potentially not playing? And that Christian, just gives... Christian's a down. He's a down. Yeah, he's a down for me. Um, just so give, us your, three, give us your other downs. Yeah, just go right into yeah, it. Yeah, my, my three downs. Uh Luca De La Torre, mm -hmm. Christian Pulisic. Mm -hmm. Now these and... are big downs; they're just little incremental downs, right? Yeah, they're, they're it's just an like... arrow next to their name. That's it's all. Just you know? It just means it. it's directional. It, it just means that guys... Christian Pulisic isn't going to start, according to Charlie. It's fine. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not the end of the world. Um, <clears throat> and, and my third one is is Matt Turner. Matt mm. Turner. Mm -hmm. you just mm. God, he just took a stray. You know there. what's He's sad? Hey, what? you know what's sad? I got Zach Steffen again, no clean sheet uh, on my down. I've got Ricardo Pepe on my down just yeah. because yeah. Uh, that's that arrow might might get a little bit longer uh, with what the way I'm thinking this could play out for him. I could be wrong, but that's a like strikers. That's a that's a way different battle when you're not in. Um, and then and then Giorena was down just because he went from being on the bench to not being on the bench again. And I'm just wondering like what is the what's 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 the issue here? What's going on? Which is kind of just leaves me sad because he's he is a generational talent for the national team or for the US for US soccer. Right. Uh and 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 it's just to see to see this kind of back and forth. We are losing a lot of crucial time, not just in his physical development, but just like mentally what that can do to a player over time. It's hard, it becomes harder and harder uh to deal with no matter what. So so those are those are my downs. Um my ups were uh Brendan Aronson. I think that's a, that's a really strong up. Can I can I give a can I give a um a Jesse Marsh up? Is he's not I know he's not a player. Stop sure, it. sure. Matt, okay, fine. I'm not giving Jesse Marsh. I'm Jesus. going with Matthew Hoppy getting a minute because I I I was wondering, you know, you know, I was where is Matthew Hoppy? He 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 got he got his deal and he got a minute. <clears throat> that's an up for me because now it's like, okay, can you extend that to two and then 90? Uh because he he's another player that I think uh, he's another player that I I I like in terms of of what he can bring and and he's just been missing for a year and so can only go up from here yeah yeah, yeah. it's an up like uh, when you're yeah, exactly when you're down there's only up so it's an up for me that he he he's actually they're showing him signs that he could be a contributor right away which I think is a good look as opposed to a desperate look as a squad player and then we never know what's going to happen and then uh, number three is Joe Scally this guy was not supposed to start this season. Um, okay. with, um, blanking on his name coming back. That's an, a veteran Austrian player in the squad. He started two in a row now and, and Gladbach are, are near the top of the table. So just a, a player that's continuing to maybe, again, maybe it's not this world cup, but to show that he's an international quality player that he's got, he's got some upside that he can handle adversity because you guys know that's, that's the full package that you have to have. If you're going to play at the national team or international level, you have to be able to continuously face adversity uh, at all costs for him to so for him to continue to grind I, I respect that so he's an up in my book okay I respect that I had Malik Tillman as I mentioned before uh, Tim Ream is going up in my book I had Brandon Vasquez but I'll change it just because uh, Charlie called it for him I uh, Matt Miazga played 66 minutes for FC Cincinnati and I didn't I he's alive everybody I didn't even know Matt Miazga was still alive so that hey if up. I'm giving Hoppy if I'm giving happy Hoppy and up for is, one minute I'll let you have Miazga at, I'm just saying that because I didn't even I, I just like we're seeing him he's he's not uh you know Bigfoot he's actually a yeah. real person the Loch Ness Monster so yep. so that's yep. just a small up for him I don't know if that's going to help at all but I just wanted to give him a shout out just because we hadn't mentioned Matt Miazga in a very very long time uh the downs Ricardo Pepe you'll have to jump on that train unfortunately um 
kind of getting outside of the pool. I'm pretty disappointed for Kevin Paredes, who's at Wolfsburg, not even in the 18 this week. I don't know. He's healthy, but got a healthy scratch there. And then the Seattle, anybody on the Seattle Sounders, Roldan, Jordan Morris, like that team is not playing well right now. And I don't think that's helping their cause uh, hey, going you into You would have never thought, considering they were all all-stars. Let's go. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, popularity vote. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there with regard to that. Uh, Bustio and Tessman both, both started and played for Venezia, and they lost to Genoa. So you yeah, got guys kind of hey, on the on the. I know we're I know we're getting that. to the end of the show, uh, but but uh, I guess you know I know Charlie's got a got a bolt here. But Charlie, do you like do you like playing every single match, 30, 36 games or whatever, thirty eight games in Syria, uh, Serie B? Um, if you're, I mean, Tessman, yes, for sure. Uh, but Busio, yeah, I think loss, it, loss of a year, or you think it's good? No, I think it's good for both of them. I, I do think you're playing consistent minutes. Yeah, it's Serie B, but. If you're playing every game and you're growing and, and the team's doing well, I think it's going to be fantastic for their development.